object. Because so I, to think I that find you it throw everything into the pot. They're all different situations. They all have different nuances. You can't throw everything into the same pot, stir it up, and, and make one case for action no. against everybody. What you keep doing is pointing the finger at someone else and ignoring the responsibility of our I'm own government. I'm asking what you suggest. You reject war. I'm asking I what think, you suggest be done in thing, this instance. I think the best thing for us to do as people right now is to get down to Iraq, 10,000 plus of us, to get down there to share our humanity. And by doing that, perhaps somehow, some way, we can empower the Iraqi people to compel their so-called leader to do the right thing. And if they can't, then perhaps they should go one step further. But it's their business, not ours. And we have no right to even pretend to care about the Iraqi people. We supplied the man who gassed them. Let's be honest about that. And if we want a better world, we've got to be honest. We don't care. The West does not care. American government does not care about the Iraqi people. And neither does the British government. It's sheer hypocrisy that they would pretend to care. And is caring going to Iraq and allowing yourself to be used as a propaganda tool by the regime? Because they are going to do it. You're going to get very nice coverage in the Baghdad newspapers, hardly a beacon of freedom of expression, very nice pictures on Baghdad television. You may even be garlanded with flowers. What's that going to do for the Iraqi people? I'll tell you people? how wonderful it's going to feel to get down there and to look into an Iraqi person's eyes and know that they see some hope, that they see that there's a person from the West who sees the truth, and would rather be down there with them if the bombs drop than sit back here and be a hypocrite and talk about peace. I think that that will be one of the most enriching experiences of my life. You Whatever could have looked into else, an Iraqi exile's eyes I here have. in, here in, in fact, London, somebody who had to I, run I, for his where life. I lived, where I lived in Holland, I lived with a man who has family who died in Halabja from the gas attacks. He's shown me a videotape. This man respects me and I respect him. I've also been, become friends with a man who spent seven years in an Iraqi prison, four years in solitary confinement. This man respects me and I respect him. I'm doing what I feel is best, and I am standing with the Iraqi people, and no one in their right mind could equate me to supporting Saddam Hussein. But I can't stop people from saying that sort of rubbish. Rubbish? John it's Levins, rubbish. a man who was held as a human shield yeah. in the war. He said, I asked Mr. Nichols to desist from using that description, human shield. It's an insult to the suffering of those people and their families that they went through. You are not human shields when you put yourself in harm's way voluntarily. You're tools of the Iraqi regime and nothing short of collaborators in the repression visited upon the Iraqi people. Oh, I'm really glad you gave me an opportunity to respond to that because John is a banker and he was down in Kuwait to make money. And I've seen pictures so of what? John. He was used Excuse as a human me, shield. Let me respond to what he said. This man, I've seen pictures of him with his family shaking hands with Saddam Hussein, big smiles on all their faces. And now I'm wrong because I go down to Iraq in potential harm's way to stand with the Iraqi people. This man was a banker and all, all he cared about was money and he's going to condemn me because I want to go down there and be with the Iraqi people? He's not alone in yes, condemning no. you. Well, You've not. stirred up quite a bit of anger, of course. As, you, as you know. When you talk as straight as I do, you're going to make enemies. You know that. You made a lot of enemies on this. That's right, and I've made a lot of friends around the world who believe that I'm speaking the truth, that I'm sincere and I'm passionate, and I'm willing to die if necessary to fight for what we need to do in this world to make it a better place. And I know that we're going to destroy ourselves unless we turn it around fast. Wouldn't it be harder, the hardest thing to do would actually be to sign up for an aid agency, some of those who are preparing to deal with the humanitarian tragedy that will result, maybe, if there is a war, people who are planning to try to help people in a concrete way, wouldn't that be more valuable? I think that everybody has something to offer. And if that's what feels right to someone else, then I encourage them to do that. I would certainly support anyone doing what they feel is right. My way is the way I'm doing it right now. I stick to what I believe. Every time I've done something that I felt was right, it ended up being the right thing to do. Maybe I would be more effective somewhere else. I don't know. But I do believe that what I'm doing right now is having a huge impact, and I'm inspired by what I see around the world. For all the people that hate me, I think there's probably a hundred or a thousand that actually very much appreciate what I'm doing. Do you seriously think that if the UN or an American-led coalition starts an invasion that they will care whether you're there or not? Or indeed the Iraqi people would even no. care whether you're there if the bombs start falling? Uh, you know, as far as the Iraqi people, I think it will mean something, yes, that we came down there. As far as the U.S. government, no. They're murderous, and I do not believe for a second that they want what's right in this world. This is all about power and global domination. And I think anyone who's got their eyes open realizes that. Kenneth O'Keefe, good to have you on the program. Thanks Thank very you. much.